never know when you're gonna walk up on it, do you? <laughs> That feels good. This is, this is bananas. Okay. Yee, yee. I got her. I got her. Hello, folks. Kyle here. Dark 30 Outdoors. Welcome back. If you like fishing videos, hunting videos, camping tips and tricks and advice, that sort of thing, then this is definitely the channel for you. Be sure and hit subscribe bell notifications so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Today I'm bringing you my five tips for hanging a trail cam out in the woods. Um, when I put a trail camera out in the woods I'm mostly looking to uh, do a survey, take inventory, what kind of bucks I got uh, using the general area. I'll put out a little bit of bait and uh, bring the different deer around. I'm going to get a lot of pictures of does and their young ones. But I also should get some pictures of bucks too, so that'll give me a good idea of what's in the air. So my tips for hanging a trail camera out in the woods are going to be centered around that. Some people, they've got private land, they, they put out five or six different cameras, they're trying to pattern exactly how a buck is moving through an area. That's not really my approach. Uh, I, don't, I don't have the resources for that, much less the time. So I just put a camera out. And try to take inventory, see what's out there, and these will be my five tips. Stay tuned. Okay, here we go. Tip number one, and this one's really important. Uh, when you put a trail camera out, you always want to face it in the, in the direction of north, or as best you can, straight north. If you deviate from that, a slight angle, north, northwest, north, northeast, you may be okay but you really want to try to get it facing straight north. Uh, that's going to help you avoid sun glare for uh, those dawn and dusk pictures. And that's when the deer and the, the different wildlife are typically most active. So you don't want to get sun glare and have that uh, blur out your picture so you can't really tell what you're looking at. So tip number one, definitely always try to face your camera to the north. Right. Tip number two, I am, I am out on public land. I always elevate my cameras. I try to get them up 10, 12 feet in the air. I am wearing a, a uh, safety harness. I brought climbing steps, so I will be able to get up. Uh, probably get my camera up about 12, 14 feet, so uh, that's out of the line of sight of any humans that might come by here. And, uh, that's a good tip for preventing your camera from getting stolen on public land. I, I mentioned that in my scouting video uh, from back in the uh, spring. I think that was in April. Uh, definitely check that out. I'll try to get a, a link put right, right here. <laughs> um, if you want to check that out. But I definitely, whenever I put a trail camera out, I definitely elevate. One other little side benefit that if your trail camera is going to have some human scent associated with it even if you're careful and try to wash it with scent free so it's going to have some human scent associated with it and when you put it up 10 12 feet up in a tree the deer they can't get up to it they might pick up uh, very very minute uh, bits of that smell but if they can't get right up to it and, and identify that as a source of danger then they're going to be a lot more comfortable uh, milling around in this area so that's it for tip, tip number two. Definitely want to elevate your camera. Tip number three, and that's going to deal with the camera itself, the settings. Uh, definitely get into your owner's manual, understand the settings, uh, know the settings. On my camera, uh, it can do uh, one picture at a time, or it can do a burst of three photos at a time, or it can do uh, video. I am going to set it for three burst photos at the high resolution. And I can also change the interval for when the uh, motion detector gets triggered. That can be 30 seconds, one minute, three minutes, or five minutes. I'm gonna set mine for three minutes because uh, I'm gonna get a three three photo burst and then, uh, and then I want it to wait 
I, I don't want to get that three photo burst of the same doe and her fawn 200 times. So by putting some duration in between those uh, triggers, that can definitely help. The whole point of this is get into your camera's settings, understand them, and make sure you're setting them appropriately uh, for where you're, you're putting your trail camera. Another part of settings is the date and time. Some people pay no attention to that. I like for it to capture the accurate date and time. So when I go into my settings, set my camera up I make sure that that is correct each and every time I put it out in the woods uh, having that that information can be really helpful uh, knowing how the deer are moving through this area this is not a, a spot that I will hunt uh, my my stand sites that I scouted for this area is uh, you know it's 200 yards that way and it's probably about 300 yards that way but this is in the center any bucks that are using this general area they're going to come in here and, and, and investigate this, so um, I'll definitely get a good inventory of what's in here. That brings us to tip number four. Tip number four is uh, detection range. You know, I'm going to turn this camera around real quick. Right up there is where I'm going to put my camera. It's not up there now. <laughs> Once I get it on, I'll show you that. But uh, this is the general area where I hope to capture some deer movement. I've got cross trails, trails that are running north-south, and trails that are running east-west. And it's it's a little bit of uh, a little bit of a uh, lighter foliage in here, undercarriage, if you will, with all the vegetation. So I can put that bait out, and then the, the deer are going to come in here. There's plenty of cover. They're going to feel safe. But I don't want to run my bait all the way out, you know, into those trees way up there if my if my uh, trigger can't, can't, can't pick that up that far. I do like to spread it around. I never put bait in a pile. I don't want deer to have one singularly focused spot that I spread it around. I'll put a big circle around of the uh, mineral liquid that I brought in this morning. They'll lick that right off the ground. And when two or three or four or five of them can come in and do it at the same time, they're a lot more at ease. So that was tip number four. No trigger range. Do not uh, spread bait out uh, to 200 feet if your trigger range is only 50 feet or 80 feet. Or, you know, be aware of that. <laughs> My fifth tip is stay out of the woods. I know a lot of people that uh, they hang trail cameras and they put bait out and they want to check it and swap cards every other day, sometimes every day. A lot of people, maybe they have their own property and, and then it's their back 40, so they just go out back, swap cards, whatever. They think it's not much of an intrusion. I think it's overkill. Um, if you're gonna put a camera out into the woods, into the deer's home, Stay out. Uh, that's my that that might be my my best tip. Uh, stay out. When I put a new camera out, a, a camera out in a, in a new area for the first time ever, it's a major intrusion. I I will probably return in one week to refresh in the bait and swap cards. After that, it's two weeks. I never return in, in less time than two. So that, that that's a big one. Number five. It's definitely. Stay out of the woods when you put a truck in. Let the camera capture those pictures. And then I tell you what, folks, I'm going to bring you a bonus tip. Safety first. Um, I'm only going to be three, four feet up in the tree, but I brought, I brought my safety harness. Uh, I've only got so many hands. When you're, when you're up there and you're trying to fool with the camera and get it attached and get it turned on, and, and a lot of times those things, it takes two hands. Be secure. It's easy enough to fall four feet out of a tree, crack your head on a stump or a rock, and now you got real problems. So, um, <laughs> I actually, uh, I had a ring of old injury two years ago, hanging a stand, and that was jumping down off the bottom steps. So, safety first, man. Uh, definitely don't want anybody to go out in the woods and get hurt or injured. Real quick, there is a look at the trail camera that we are going to put out in the woods today. That is a Moultrie I-20.
infrared, no glow trail camera. So that doesn't uh, it doesn't put any light out. So it is um, it is virtually invisible when it is in the in the woods. Okay, folks. There is the camera on the tree. As you can see, as I pan back, it is up there, nice and hot. Tilt it down where, so that uh, in my detection zone right here, I should be able to get some nice pictures of some deer from that vantage point. And this, this is our bait. This is what's going to make them come in and check it out. That's a liquid mineral bait. And uh, we will see how it does. Oh, hey folks. I just stepped out of the, the woods. Just want to do a quick summer here. Five tips for hanging your trail camera out in the woods. Tip number one, face it to the north. Tip number two, get it up in the air. At least nine, ten feet up in the air. Tip number three, be aware of your settings and be sure that you set your camera according to the settings exactly how you want it. Tip number four is know your uh, triggering distance for your uh, trail camera. Tip number five, stay out of the woods. I won't be back for another week to, to swap cards and, and lay down some more bait. So it uh, gives things a chance to kind of cool off from the, the human intrusion. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have tips for trail cameras, uh, definitely be sure and add some comments down below. I, I'd love to see your, uh, your ideas and your input. Thanks for watching.